How's it going everybody? Uh, behind me I have our Can-Am Renegade uh, 1000XXC and um, this has been an awesome machine, a machine that, that I've absolutely loved spending time with. Um, one of our demos that we've had here for a couple of months and, and hopefully we have it for uh, a little while longer as well. Um, it is bone stock um, as you can see behind me. Um, I have not done any upgrades to it at all as of this point. Um, today we're going to make our first upgrade to it and it's it's well deserved update for sure. Um, we're going to put a new set of tires on it so my, my only complaint um, about this machine at all that I can really think of is we've had some issues with um, uh, puncturing the tires. So I, I punctured three out of the four tires on this and um, we're gonna replace it with a, a set of my favorite um, ATV tires for cross country style riding. Um, so uh, rocks, roots, deep woods, mud, um, tight, tough, technical terrain. Um, and my favorite tire, my go-to tire uh, for um, those situations for many, many years has been, let me flip the camera and I'll show you, has been the original Maxxis Bighorn. Now, not the Maxxis Bighorn 2.0, but the original Maxxis Bighorn, which is what this is right here. Um, we have a set of 25 inch tires that we're gonna put on this. Um, uh, 25 10 by 12s on the rear, you're looking at a rear tire right here, and a set of 25 by 8 by 12 front. So just a little narrower on the front. And if you look, at the Renegade, you can see that the front tire is uh, about two inches narrower than the rear um, on it. So back to this Bighorn tire, uh, I like the tread pattern. It's, it's been really tough, very tough radial. Um, and it does have, you can run it with the white letters out or you can run it with a, with a black wall. And um, I'm not 100% sure what we're gonna do to be completely honest with you. Um, at this point, um, I, I haven't made my mind up, but I'm thinking we're gonna go white letters out, but I could change my mind. Now, one of the things that I do wanna show you is the reason why we're replacing those is you can see um, I got a huge puncture on this one right here. The other ones are smaller, but this one was, we did it right on this one. So um, I'm not gonna tell you that the big horns won't puncture, they, they do and we have, but um, technically speaking, um, we've had really great luck with those over the years. And um, I decided that, you know, since I've worked with Maxis on a lot of different projects over the years, uh, the one thing that I really wanted to do was um, try this machine as much as I love it. I wanted to try it with a big horn to see if it makes it that much better. So um, I'm not using my ATV jack. You can see it right here. That thing is an absolute piece of junk. Uh, I just have a, just a little portable aluminum, it's a Harbor Freight. Um, aluminum jack right here and, and uh, I put a block of wood there to just make it raise a little quicker, a little faster. Um, you know, I know what people say, ah, it's a Harbor Freight jack, this or that. Well, the reality of it is, is I'm not, I'm not jacking up the space shuttle. So I'm literally jacking up an ATV um, and we're doing it outside today. Uh, we've been stuck uh, basically around here with this coronavirus nonsense going on. And uh, it's pretty nice out, so I figured, ah, we'll do it outside as opposed to cooped up in the garage. Um, so nice thing about this, a couple jacks, and I got this guy off the ground already, and um, nice and easy to take this off. If you've never done your own tires, if you've never actually um, mounted a set of tires uh, on your own, these are pretty easy to do it, honestly. Got some nice cherry blossoms in the background there. Looks really nice. Uh, anyway, a couple simple tools is all you're gonna need. So um, the, uh, the bolts to hold the wheels on, the lug nuts, those are 17 millimeters. And then the beadlock rings, those are 10 millimeters. So we'll need those. Um, I'm using uh, just an impact driver um, with, I have the 17 and I have the 10 millimeter on here to make this pull off a little easier. Um, and I'm also gonna use this tool. This, this is an awesome tool. Um, they don't give these to us, I've bought these. Uh, this is the XB451 from Beadbuster. And this is supposed to be um, good when you have a beadlock wheel setting. So um, I, I've used a number of different beadlock uh, bead breakers, sorry, bead breaker tools over the years. And, you know, some are better than others. The reality of it is, is this bead buster is awesome. 
again, I paid for this, so they didn't hand this to me. Um, and I've really liked it. Um, I've, I've um, been able to break the beads on tires that uh, my son has a, an old Raptor 250 that had the original tires on it from, you know, probably they were on there 10 years, nine years, and they were a bear uh, to take off. And I was able to actually break them with this thing here. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. I'm, I'm trying to film this uh, solo right now. Uh, and um, so I'm gonna do the best that I can with, with one hand here until I get some help. As you can see, my film crew is um, down there going all caveman and uh, you know burning sticks instead of helping me right now. So that's the way that it goes sometimes. But so here we go. So we're gonna start with the worst tire first. We'll take this one off. And um, the first thing that I'm gonna do I'm just going to line up on here. This, this thing works awesome. So uh, I used to do this by hand over the years and it has been so much nicer to have a, an electric impact. And I do have a big air compressor, but these, these battery powered impact uh, wrenches are just awesome. There we go. So I'll put those aside and pull this off. And there it is. So take a look here. The brakes look pretty good. Everything looks good. A little muddy, but uh, no worse for wear. Everything uh, nice and tight and works awesome on this, this Renegade XXC. So um, what I would normally do if this wasn't a beadlock is I would pull um, the uh, valve stem, I would take the cover off the valve stem off, and I would take a valve stem tool and pull the guts out from inside of there. Um, but the fact that this is a beadlock, once I start um, loosening all these, um, you'll hear the air come out of it. So let me just go ahead and switch tools here and we'll do that. So next step for me is um, I don't like to put these in with an impact gun. I like to run them in a little slower, uh, but to remove them, this works really, really great. So uh, what I will do here is just run these all out and you'll start to hear the air coming out. There we go. I'll just make sure these are all good and once I have them all out of there I'll just pull that ring off and probably the hardest part in this whole thing is just making sure you don't lose all these bolts there's a bunch of them there we go so I'm gonna set these aside you can see a lot of dirt in there so not a huge deal um, what I'll probably do is get some air and blow some of that out of there so um, once I got that beadlock off, I noticed there's a, there's a lot of dirt under here. And rather than having all that dirt end up inside the wheel, I'm just gonna blow this off of here, so. Um, while I'm thinking of it too, I'm going to pull the valve stem off and take the guts out of the inside of the valve stem. Come in here so they can see. So um, this tool just has a, a little extractor. Put it inside of there and you can unscrew it and it allows you to pull that valve out of, the, out of there. And um, we want to put that in a spot where we're not going to lose it. So sit over here. So on a beadlock wheel, the whole, func the whole purpose and function of a beadlock is, you know, this is part of the wheel and this bolts to this that then pinches the tire together. So if you ever get a flat, 
like, and if you're me, it's basically every time you go out, um, you can keep the, uh, the tire from being able to separate from a wheel. So um, as you can see here, that outer beadlock ring mounts, pinches this, the tire, in between the outer beadlock wheel and the inside of the wheel. So that part's broken. You don't have to break that bead. On the inside though, you have to break that. And if you don't have the proper tool, you're never gonna get it open, um, ever. So um, that's where this bead buster comes into play. And this thing is, is awesome, as I've already said. And the only thing you really need with it is um, a three quarter inch socket. And uh, this just allows you to adjust this. You get a perfect bite on here and then uh, we'll go ahead and break that bead. So let me go ahead and get that set up. So as we set this up to, to start to break this bead, this um, bolt right here adjusts the, uh, the tightness of this, right? So you wanna have this loosened up so you have a lot of travel here. This bolt right here adjusts the height of, of this particular arm here. So we're gonna basically, if you notice inside of here, as this bolt goes down this little piece goes down with it too. So you wanna set this up so that that's pretty flat there. So we can get it under the lip and just push that in there like this and use this three quarter inch. Well, other way. So as you guys can see, I haven't even gone to break the bead yet, but as I tighten that up, it pinches this lower foot down on here. And now I'll just drive this down. And that should hopefully, it always doesn't do it on the first try. Sometimes it takes multiple tries. So we loosen that back up, loosen this up, and we'll go over here and take another bite out of it. So you'll notice that it's trying to ramp up on here. I actually don't have this arm down far enough. There we go. You can see the, the bead starting to break. I'll just slide it over here a little further. Do the same thing again. Line this bottom piece up so we get a nice bite on there. And this is a bit of a workout too, so. And it's just a matter of working your way around there. Taking your time best you can and let the tool do all the work, most of the work. So you can see on there, I don't have those lined up. So if I try and push that back into here, it's not gonna, not gonna work. Close. I'm running into a situation on here where I have the tire pushed down about as far as I can. It's really close to, to breaking the bead, but it's just not there. So what I'm gonna do is loosen this back up. 
and I'm just gonna put my tire iron underneath it here just to give it a little bit more down travel. And hopefully that's gonna be enough. There we go, that definitely pushed it. Almost. There we go. And from here, typically, if you can get an area where um, the, the wheel starts to poke through the tire. Even if you have to get a tire iron down inside of there, just enough to break in there, you can typically pull the wheel out. There you go. So there it is. So we're just gonna go over this, clean it up, make sure everything's good, and then we'll put our new tire on it. So here's a little pro tip for you. Um, you want to make sure, obviously, that the inside of the wheel is clean for sure. Um, this is going to go uh, basically I want to have the side where the beadlock is out here. So I can't push this through this way. It has to go through the other way. So that being said, if I want the white letters to be out, I'm going to face them down. And people use a lot of different things to help mount the tires. Um, I use Simple Green. I, I use this stuff to clean. I use it as a, as a lubricant when I'm mounting things. Um, it's just a great, it's just great. So I spray a lot of it on there. It's cheap. Um, I'll go ahead and basically I want to lodge this on the one end and just start pushing it. And once you get it started, usually a little easier to get it in there. There you go. There it is. So, with a bead lock, the rest is kind of easy. Um, you want, definitely want to make sure that this is clean. I probably should have done that before, but it was pretty clean. So we want to make sure that we have a good amount of simple green in here, just so that it, the tire is slippery enough for. Um, there's a little ridge inside of here, so the tire needs to be able to move around in there. Um, I want to take my bead lock ring here, make sure that it's clean. This one's, this one's pretty good, pretty clean. And um, we're going to line this up. I don't like to use uh, any sort of um, air ratchet or impact driver, to, at least to get these started. Um, they don't need a whole lot of uh, torque on them to begin with. Um, so to get them started, I like to do it by hand uh, so that we're not cross threading anything. These are cast aluminum wheels and they're really expensive if you have to replace one. And um, you know, that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you have to re-thread it. And, um, that's not a fun job either. That's way worse than changing tires. So the amount of time that you're going to save by doing this all um, with an impact driver, I don't think is worth it personally. So go through and run these in by hand. And I can feel each one of these biting. So I'm basically tightening them as tight as I can by hand. All right, now another tip. Hey, I'm going to use my impact driver here. Uh, I'm gonna go just very short bursts on here because I don't want a whole lot of power. And I'm gonna go every other, every other one. So I'll start here where my, where my valve stem is. Just give it a little bit, give it a little bit, a little bit, a 
little bit. Now what I like to do, because I was skipping every other one, I don't know if the vibration loosened these up, so I'll go back in and hand tighten these. Just to make sure that we're not stripping anything. There we go. And now I'll go around and snug these up a little bit. Okay, and now back to the original ones. So I'm just basically uh, rotating between the first group and the second group. then what I would recommend that you guys do is you torque this to whatever the manufacturer, the re, uh, manufacturer's recommended torque specs are. So that's going to depend on, on each individual wheel. That's your responsibility to look that up. So final thing that we're going to do here is we're going to seat the bead. So the bead is seated really nicely here, obviously, because it's a bead lock, but on the inside, it's not. So here's a trick to doing that. I load it with a bunch of simple green. Um, you're going to go ahead and keep the um, valve stem open so there's no guts inside of that and we're going to just go ahead and inflate this so got it on there and i'll show you from the back side here you may have to push on it to get everything to seat there we go. So I got it to seat, and you'll see as it starts to inflate with air, it's gonna start to push that side of the tire out and pop it right onto the bead. And it's just a waiting game, really. And you, you wanna be careful that you're not inflating it to more than what the recommended pressure is. Um, and if you look really closely on the tire bead, start to see it move and then it, there it goes what we're gonna do let all the air back out of it um, you have to let the air out in order to put the guts back inside of that tire so we'll let that most of the air out anyway at least until we can get the uh, valve stem in there. Go ahead and put that back in. And then now we'll just add as much air as, as we want. Now I'm gonna run about five pounds or so in this for now. There you go. And valve cap on. There it is. And we'll just mount this wheel right back on here. So. Yeah. 
So I always hand tighten these again for the same reason. I don't want to cross thread any of these. And uh, I'll go ahead and put my 17 millimeter back on. And there you have it. What I'll do is I'll go back through and I'll torque these, torque the lug nuts, and then I'll go back through and I'll, I'll torque these all to spec just to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Um, but that is definitely a, a market of improvement for sure over what we had before. And uh, I just have to do it three more times. So we'll, uh, we'll do those uh, off camera and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. All right, everybody. So we're wrapping up the install of our original um, Maxxis Bighorn six ply tire. Uh, it's a radial uh, in 25 by 8 by 12 on the front and 25 by 10 by 12 on the rear of our Can-Am Maverick 1000 XXC. Um, I love the way these tires look on here. Uh, they just give it more of a racy look. I mean, honestly, when you take a look at the Maverick, um, you know, it, it just screams fun and power and um, performance and now it has some tires on it that look the part. Um, I'm looking forward to getting out on the trail and uh, putting some time on this with the new tires. You know, they're heavy. Um, the, the one negative that I will say about these tires and about any six ply radial for that matter is they're heavy, but you gotta give something up to gain something. So if you want the puncture resistance, um, you want the tire durability, that's going to come at a price and the price is weight. All right. So definitely uh, check out a, a future review of the performance of these tires. And um, by all means, check out our other videos um, on Speeding Media and uh, certainly like our YouTube page, uh, you know, click the like button and um, subscribe and comment. And we'll uh, be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Have a great day.